Uh-huh. There we go. Bingo. Main host. I just saved us an hour and a half. I would have loved to have time. done this twice. Woo. Just yeah, like I brothers. Mean, this, yeah, like brothers. <laughs> Just like brothers. <laughs> this, this might be Price's brothers. Oh be. boy. Oh. Oh. oh but I can assure you, I'm not gonna bend over and lube up for you like Mason did. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll, I can assure you, I'm going down swinging. <laughs> once, we, <laughs> once we do it twice, you may lose all your vigor. <laughs> You'll, yeah, all your stamina will be gone. Mason was fighting in the first round. Through, I was. The second one, he I was, made it twelve he rounds. A, he was a tired dog. <laughs> so I had a round. rematch an it, hour in later. In a sad little Iraqi costume. Uh -huh. <laughs> it got sad. <laughs> uh, welcome everybody to the FN Movie Podcast. Emphasis on FNP. I'm your host, DJ oh. Dylan, in the house. With me today, the remix himself, Nathan. Um, scratch the record, Mason. And <laughs> the only needle in this house is a uh, price bell. Present. And uh, what record are we reviewing today, Nathan? Uh, what was the name of that song? <laughs> yeah, what's the song? What's yeah. the song? Keep me yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> he starts just flailing his arms. Yeah. Like coming up the, the water drain. Yeah, you yeah. gotta do like the, the little thing he always yeah. does. Sweet dude. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, what's the movie then? What's the movie? Uh, ride your oh. wave. It's a Spanish film. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Filmed in California. This is the the OC sequel, right? This is the movie from the TV show, The no, OC. I would have right? rather watched The OC. Uh, <laughs> All right, Price, what is this movie actually about? I'll let you go ahead and take All it. All right, well, this was my pick. Uh, we'll get into why later. Uh, but sum it up really easily. Uh, girl <laughs> uh, moves into a new new city on the beach, meets a firefighter. They fall in love. And apparently it's not a spoiler, uh, but the her boyfriend dies, and Happens she winds up. The movie's just basically about her dealing with his death. And that's mm. really it. That's all the story really is. Sweet dude, I died in <laughs> water now. I know, I, was so I don't want to move on. I was reading the back of the box of the movie, and it tells you on the back that he died. I was yeah. very surprised. It happened in the trailer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. too, so. I mean, it's huh. not like like you could see it coming. I mean, yeah, but for it to be like the turning point of the movie for like yeah. and. It's forty percent of the way in, roughly. I was gonna say like, twenty yeah. twenty yeah. minutes in, it yeah. happened. I think maybe twenty five or thirty, yeah. but. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, dude. I'll go ahead. Let me start it off. Just yeah, say yeah, why yeah, I picked yeah, this movie. Uh, it's the same director as the guy who did The Night is Short, which uh, a lot of us here liked, including myself. I wanted to give it a 10, but I really like that movie. So I've been watching more of this guy's movies. Uh, Ride Your Wave was uh, his newest one. And it's actually his last movie uh, did he that die? he's doing. <laughs> I was going to ask. Uh, he's, uh, doing t uh, he's doing, a I don't know if he completely retired or he's just doing TV now. But he did like a Devil Man Cry Baby. If yeah. you all have seen that oh, on Netflix, yeah. I was very surprised. Uh, so he's done a lot of TV stuff, and that's what he's either sticking to or retiring now. But mm -hmm. I picked this movie just because it looked really visually interesting, and I really like the director. So, so this was his last, anime. This was his last animated movie that he was mm -hmm. doing. I mean, that's... yeah, that he's gonna do. Boys, what's your thoughts on that? Let's, uh, let's lead in. He swung for the fences, I guess, but like not. I like Devil Man Cry Baby. I mean, that one was really good. I mean, it was original. It was gory. It was like that. And the it's night is so, short. Yeah, the night is short was a very different style animation wise, mm -hmm. which I think is why a lot of us liked it. And mm -hmm. it was very upbeat and chipper. And then they got to this movie, and it was like, okay, he went really safe. Like maybe he went too safe with this movie. He went very upbeat, very chipper. Uh, but I didn't. I don't think it landed uh, in like a really happy film. I don't think it landed in like the sad category either. I think. I think a lot of stuff just fell flat with this movie. Um, it didn't help that and we're going to get into this, and we'll probably talk about this for a long time. But mm -hmm. the, the, the I song, know what this is. the song choice was not bad. It's just that it was the only song choice throughout the entire movie. And if you put all your all your coins on black on the roulette table, you know, like yeah, you might win, but at the same time, it's like it's just the same song, like over and over in a couple different versions. But man, I got tired of hearing that song. Yeah, I don't. Uh, want, I don't want to sit on the song part for too long because I mean, it speaks for itself. Like they they beat that f the first two lines of that chorus. They just beat to death. Like beat and that's the for those, which it summons something. Right, cool. like it's a plot device, and I get that. You but you could the, trigger it with something else. Yeah, I think in the and I'm I think the only one who watched it Japanese. You guys all watched English, right? No, I did subbed. No, we all did subbed. subbed. You did. did. Oh. Wait, it was reversed. Yeah, yeah I watched did. English. Yeah, you guys did, did the Japanese one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forget which. I remember I was on which the one. Which one did you do, one. Nathan? 
uh, the one you sent. Because I, I requested everybody watch sub. Yeah. Because I, I watched a little bit of the dub. and I, I was going to, fan. but then the version I got a hold of was the English version. So I just said, ah, let it rock. So, right. um, That's cool. Pretty which, different dynamic. the voice acting was totally good. Like, the entire time it wasn't, like, a bad voice acting one. Didn't, like, fall stale or anything like that. I think it was solid. So, I mean, if I'm just going to give that notch to the English version, good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but hearing the song in English, I think I would have preferred it be a song I didn't understand. <laughs> because knowing it in the words and for, like, the whole day afterwards, I knew probably the whole first two lines of that. <laughs> and then, like, afterwards, I've just, like, I don't know, drank it out of my brain, I guess. But, like, yeah. hearing the same line over and over and over and over and over again, and you got a bunga, dude. What's going on? I'm dead. Do you still love me? Like, move on, bro. I want to die. <laughs> like, Please let me finish my cycle. <laughs> right. That, that part just, it, it really took the air out of any dramatic part of it for me. Like, I think the first time it does it, it's like, okay, I, I felt it a little bit on that one because she's like crying and he comes up and I'm like, cool. It's hit the, it hits the drama note because at this at the core of this like kind of happy-go-lucky movie, they're trying to do like this grief processing film. It totally does. Yeah. Right. But the tone doesn't stay where it should for the serious notes to stay serious for me. The, the upbeat stuff, that all, I think that stuff all lands in it. It's very, it has that chipper mentality, kind of like a uh, walk-on girl. It has that, like, whenever it's wanting to be in that tone, nails that tone fine. But I think that it only kind of dips into the uncomfortable tone for a little bit. Not in the content. They st- they do the content well, but again, it's, my, <laughs> my boyfriend died, it's sad, now I'm seeing him everywhere. And I think that they could have been really interesting if it, like, even if it wasn't actually mystical and he didn't actually exist there. Like, yeah. the entire time, if it was in her head, I think if that... If she just saw images of him. Right. she saw, like, visions that weren't, like, physically in front of her, maybe. And that... I mean, the fact that he ends up being, like, the supernatural force is fine. Like, whatever. This yeah. is an anime... It's an anime. Yeah, it's a Japanese anime film. That's pretty par for the course. It doesn't bother me that it goes that direction. I kind of wish it had gone the other way, but it's fine. Um, it does kind of create some problems later, but I'll, I'll save my point for on, to get into I... those ones. At the very beginning of this movie, I was just like, this movie is boring me to death. <laughs> um, Damn. And it wasn't. <laughs> but also, the whole time I was thinking, like, if this movie doesn't, like, just jump the shark and become, like, magical or something like that, I'm not going to understand why Price picked this movie. <laughs> Like I was just like this. This is like something's got to give. This is literally a teen drama as an anime. Yeah. Why did he pick this movie? I don't understand. Yeah. And then towards the latter half, like I get it a little bit more, um, but yeah, it was a like it was not a necessary thing that our ghost boyfriend character mm-hmm. also was like able to control water he was a water bender he was literally <laughs> he was absolutely yeah, he, like, a unit he like picks up a lake's worth of water right. to to extinguish. extinguish the fire of a tree that is like the world tree like right. this thing is it's unbelievable huge. they built a skyscraper around this tree and then can we all definitely agree that realistically speaking People drown when he goes up. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. no. They either drown well, or they, they drown, fall they and they die. Fall, to the, yeah, like, yeah. There's like, no I, way. I was fully like, some of those firefighters die. Dead. Totally and dead. He worked with those firefighters, <laughs> and he knowingly is killing them. Yeah, he's just this death water elemental, which again is like <laughs> I was, funny, but objectively more interesting. Like, here's the thing, though: if they didn't drown to death, they burnt alive. Yeah, <laughs> it was one of the two. Listen, they they had a hard day either way, and yeah, they, they had definitely. A hard day. Physics do not work the way that they play that. Like, even if he's controlling the water and they're surfing on the way down, which is a pretty cool shot. I'll give him that. That but, was the coolest part of maybe the whole movie. Yeah, visually, it's like the coolest part. Seeing surfing down. Sweet dude, I'm, I'm your boyfriend. Even though, yeah. like, the sister, sister, like, yeah. grabbing her leg and, like, yeah. planning it back on uh-huh. the surfboard. She would have been going at mock speed. Like, <laughs> terminal oh, yeah, that, was, that was free falling. <laughs> right. Free falling. <laughs> Thousands of gallons of water, mystical or otherwise. I would have rather not the water been there and me just right. fucking hit the ground flat. <laughs> like, I don't care. I don't want to be surfing. But this is magical fast. and anime and elements, so, like, yeah. mocking physics is, like, the one of the best, like, anime tropes you can possibly do. Right. So, I, I'm jumping in here now. Jump, jump. So, yeah, jump on in the wave, I'll go dude. ahead and jump. So, I <laughs> deeply <laughs> adore this movie. Um, I'll go ahead and start with the con since we're talking about it. And the biggest oh, con, done. the <laughs> biggest con that I'm agreeing, agreeing with you 
all on is that I hated the climax. Yeah. The climax <laughs> is so unnecessary. First of all, it's super contrived. Hmm. Uh, they're like, the fireworks guys are coming back, which I appreciate the irony of that because like they're the ones who kind of started all this mm -hmm. because back uh, at the beginning, they started the fire that caused... Um, uh, Her. Min Hino Hinoka and Minato. So the, mm -hmm. the the two people to meet. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate I the irony that at, that at the end uh, that singing. they yeah. kind of brought them back together. But it's very contrived again because like the main girl, she's like, let's call the police. And the girl's like, the other girl's like, no, I want to get a picture of their faces. I'm like, why? That's <sighs> so stupid. I got to prove it. And then yeah. like the ending, like the director's like, all right, we got to have some big anime moment. We got to have some big like climax. And I, this movie really didn't need it because it's so, this movie's so grounded in quote unquote reality up until this point that like this was not needed. Like this isn't like reality at all. And then I really, really hated the fact that they didn't like this movie has subtle storytelling throughout the movie, except at the end when like it finally like shows you that like she's not imagining her boyfriend. Like I thought it was a figment of her trying to cope with mm -hmm. his death. And I would have really liked it if it stuck with that. But they sh have this big extravagant scene where like he does his magic and like all the firemen see him. His um, they drown. His they little drown. his little student sees him and is like, oh, you're actually real. His Whoa, sister this is awesome. actually sees him. And his him. sister yeah. sees him. And I was like, I really wish that they would have left that to our imagination, mm -hmm. like to wonder whether or not he actually is real. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the only, that's the only really big downer I had on this movie and it is a big one. I was but about to say it's a pretty that, big that was a huge detractor <laughs> from the movie. Mm -hmm. Um like yeah. this this could have been just really well written like grief and if you had not known that the boyfriend character was gonna die early on in the story, like it could have been much more impactful too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But instead it ends up becoming this magical thing where he is actually there and I think that cheapens the overall like story that they could tell about yeah, like right. grief and loss. It doesn't feel like the stakes are there because everything just goes magical, fantastical Does. instead of letting it be real. Well, and <laughs> plus, like like a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, whenever we'd watch like Spirited Away, for instance, mm -hmm. like I don't think I had actually seen an anime up until that point. And whenever I think of animes, like I actually think of this movie now. Whenever I watch this movie, I'm like, oh, this is the kind of shit that that the animes are all about. This, this is magical being, this like spiritual, like the bad this, tropey part of this anime. beluga whale that she's dancing. You know, it's and it's it's not a bad thing. But whenever I think of like this movie now, this is like a staple anime movie for me. Like in the future, whenever. Someone's gonna pick another anime. I don't like that you be use like, it in such a bad way. No, I know, and there's no bad connotation, but it's yeah. just like whenever someone picks an anime, unfortunately, I think my mind is gonna go to this movie, mm. and I'm gonna say as long as it's better than this movie. And we've had the times where like you picked uh, the Cat Returns. I wasn't too hot on that one. Uh, uh, I like the better when you like Penguin. The Cat Returns didn't really feel like an anime. Like it yeah. could have been a Western uh, cartoon. It very well. true. Yeah. yeah, it was a PBS movie. Remember, we decided that it was like a PBS yeah, yeah. cartoon. Exactly. But like some of those movies are very like sort of off the rails a little bit, and mm -hmm. it's this one was very much off the rails for me. It, but it's still the you know the structure of an anime. I don't know. I had a I had a few other little qualms too. Um, okay, let me bring some positives because yeah, bring it I don't care. Okay, you you all are just talking about negatives. Bring it on. So the, that the reason okay. that I like this movie so much is because it tells it has two different messages that it, I believe aren't really shoved in your face. Unlike his previous work with The Night Is Short, that movie he even though I gave it such a high score, the director really shoved it in your face, like the messages that it's really trying to get across to you. Uh, namely being the inadequacy, I think, of the 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 guy, you know, how like he goes through that big ordeal in his head, like you're not good enough for blah, 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 and has that whole tornado. No. Not really subtly done. And this movie, I think, does two different themes very subtly and very well. The first of which being like finding your own path, which again is the name of the movie, but like, and they keep saying you need to ride your wave, you need to ride your wave. And that's just like them saying that she needs to find her own path because she has had such a problem up to this point finding what she wanted to do. And it's really neat that, like, when she meets um, 
Hinato, she's like, you are like, you just seem perfect. Like, there's he nothing was, wrong with you. He like, was an athlete. He yeah, was the whole package. That he, like, he's just perfect. And he's like, I really wasn't always like this. Like, Packing I had to solid work. nine inches for sure. Like, yeah. like he's like, I had to work for this. I Ride had to do. Wave, dude. <laughs> I had to do everything for it. And the reason that he even like, like he was like a little kid. He couldn't swim or anything like that. And like she. I thought that scene, like it did that flashback for her. Like, oh, it did saying, a flashback. Like, like she, Hang on. I don't know. like there, she saved, flashback like she saved his we'll life. We'll <laughs> Never mind. I'm done. No, I get it. I get it. No, like, no that, that, that was, I don't want to talk. If that, was gonna cool, be like, that was a cool. That was a cool plot shit. twist where like she was the one that ended up saving him. I'll right. agree with that. That was, I didn't see it coming. But at the same time, I don't understand why they didn't see it coming. Like. Like, they wouldn't have known does, that. Like that's why. Like they were little kids. Like, that that's girl just saved that's a little boy. How come she didn't immediately was like, whoa, hang on a minute. She wouldn't be able to recognize. That's crazy. It was. I well, saved how many a little kids. Kid have you saved? Was, yeah. Well, right. so also, it seems like she didn't have a very strong memory of having done that. Maybe right. she did. Like, she had, to, she like, had yeah. to ask her mom, like. If there was some kind of like story with the beluga thing, with mm. well, I don't know if it was with the beluga, but no, she was like, some "Was that rescue of, story like, shit again?" Like, yeah, she she, she like yeah. she recognized that that was a thing that had happened that she remembered, but she I don't think she knew that she was the one that did it. Maybe right. I don't know. I'd be riding that shit to my grave if I saved somebody. <laughs> I don't know. Like yeah, one time when I was just, five, I fucking saved. I love I love the plot twist, but then I start thinking about the plot twist, and I'm like, what? She's not going to remember that she was, like, famous in her hometown. I like, like it, but I don't like how it's executed. Like, by that point in the film, it doesn't give us any breadcrumbs or thinking that, no. that this was going to be a thing. Pull the rug out. And it does feel like they thought of it, like, two-thirds of the way through writing the film. And Maybe. then they were like, hey, what if that she was the one that... Yeah, mm-hmm. write it in, write it in, yeah. write it. Like, it feels like... I the, don't know. I feel like For they, me, it felt like... like they they, they didn't doesn't. give you breadcrumbs for it, but they had, like, all these pieces lying around that that then tied up in a nice little bow. Right. Mostly just the, like, beluga whale. And the, the and, turtle. And going back to the theme the of, of, like, riding your wave, like... Like, her saving him was, like, what she needed to be doing with her life. is like, working towards that goal, like, that skill that she had. Mm-hmm. Because, like, her saving him allowed for this great individual who touched so many other lives. Who saves people Who for saves a people, which is why she went and did, like, that saving lives course and stuff. Which I assume she kept doing, even though she ran away at that one point. But I assume she went back and did, because yeah. that's the direction she was wanting to go with her life. Mm-hmm. I will say that, like... Well, I, I don't think that the she saved him as a kid, and now they're back on this one again. Added a whole lot of extra stuff, and it felt for me like that I just kind of came to that conclusion, like, I don't know, two-thirds of the way in with it. That that aside, but everything else being that circle cycle, right? So the cycle of life and death, and the circle of them meeting each other as kids, and then meeting again. Like, she saves him, he saves her, and then they meet because these firework people, and then they get reunited again because the firework people, and then he becomes a tidal wave. Um, <laughs> that part aside, like, the the circle of life and death in this movie, where it's, like, constantly, like, the things are repeating themselves, I think that was a cool thematic thing after the fact. Like, whenever I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, yeah, the firework people were the ones that brought them together, like, as adults, and then they brought them back together again. He, they, and How basically his firework people not in- because nobody like, took pictures. This what this Are this is what the sister was like trying to get. Perpetually on sale in Japan. Like this was at least six months. China right? maybe. I don't know Japan. I mean, they said that they were like Beijing fireworks and uh, at least in the they English. They have version. a lot of festivals. I don't hmm. know. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they have festivals, think... but these guys were like, we got the fucking Duke Cannon nine thousand. You would, you would with also these imagine that there's some kind of conscience to these people. No, no. They they burned an apartment that's complex. A, that's the thing. Yeah. So the first time you think they would learn their lesson, yes. Yeah. You think the morality of it all would be like, let's never but touch Instead, they're like, let's again. go into this building with a giant dead tree, like literally a world tree. What's the and worst set it that could behind? happen? The only decent decision that they made from the first to the second time was the first time it was where they at they were in an under construction place. Yeah. The second time they were in an abandoned, <laughs> like not ever gonna change type, you know, building. So that's the, the only most step flammable that building in <laughs> town, and yeah. they said, they said let's, perfect. Let's go to one less populated area. Right. Um, I think the coolest thing about this movie, if I'm probably saying it, is like just the symbolism between like fire and water. So from the very beginning, she was really good at water. He was really good at fire. They obviously crossed over paths a little bit. He sort of conquered his fear, rode his wave, whatever, mm-hmm. and learned how to surf, which was cool. I just, I think a lot goes into that where, you know, maybe, maybe if like she had realized what he had to go through, then that would have been help. But I don't know. 
I thought that was really cool. Ooh, another positive I'll give to this film is I like that the the soy boy beta cut guy and uh, his sister get together. No, dude, fuck that. I that don't whole, like that, that sister at all. That whole plot line was Not, so stupid. The plot line up until then, but I for me it's them. just like, I didn't like that they lined him up to be the main dude and then like this dude just sideswipes it. So I hate, stupid. I hated that part. I was hate just him like, for it. <laughs> why, <laughs> why? Why is he giving it to this rando? <laughs> this guy's been worshiping her. That, that it, bro does not follow no, fucking it, bro it, code. The guy, <sighs> the guy who liked her first and was like that that girl out there is my hero yeah was, yeah was minato it wasn't the other guy yeah. i don't believe you i'm 100 percent. it was positive. wasabi that said like wow that girl's awesome and then minato if that's his name minato's the, the guy the guy that died dude. yeah yeah minato like i think he definitely swooped in which like he, he didn't minato is the one who uh, feels like a swoop. i don't know i'm gonna rewatch it yeah, no, i'm right. positive i have rewatched it but at the very I'm end i'm gonna take prices but at the very end like, I mean, you've watched it what three times Twice. twice, twice. Wasabi okay. at the very end He's said, only rode that "I was the twice. one that liked you." You guys remember that? No, he said he always had liked her. Yeah, yeah. But but senpai uh, was dating you, so I couldn't go for you. But that's Which the thing. That like beforehand, was, that was... scene was so cringy. Oh, oh yeah, man. I don't know. I, I didn't like. Wasabi. But not like I didn't think it was bad. It was just like the office kind of cringy, where I'm like, oh man. Right. Some people would do this. It's this, this intentional movie. teen drama stuff, yes. but, which is why I was about to say, which is like why it was like, oh, fuck you. Like, it just, it fell off. And then, it like, didn't, it didn't do it. Right. By the time that he gets together with the sister, like, I'm like, whatever. I was doing this by the time I, those like, two the, got together. The, I just don't understand him and the sister at all it because she sense. is such a standoffish character the entire time like she is Isn't straight up type? mean the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> just now no that. and she's like no i'm just like sharp tongued like no yeah. you're a mean no person. you're you're, you're, you're mean. a bad person you're cruel. like you're, she you're... like uh the main girl drops the plate of like coffee and stuff oh, and yeah. she's like what are you doing like, you piece of shit like, what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> like chill like yeah her her brother dies and their brother's girlfriend she's yeah. just like what the fuck is your problem yeah, you're trash once what, you get over it that's yeah. what she was basically have you tried saying. crying more you fucking baby <laughs> wow <laughs> speaking of honestly off screen i feel like that's what she was saying really yeah. though speaking of the grief thing that was the other theme that i was going to talk about that i think that this movie did really well like i really like dark like dark movies and as much as you all talk about like this movie being chipper and everything i thought this movie was incredibly dark because uh mainly like one of the, like, the scene that, like, that you could tell, like, that they were, like, they seemed like an actual, like, really cute couple, they like, did. really mm-hmm. liked each other. Yeah, charismatic um, couple, though. And yeah. then, like, you know, he winds up dying, and then, um, so, like, I'll go ahead and say there were, like, four scenes that really stood out to me. First was them, uh, bonding, like, with them singing that song or whatever. Uh, second, which I Kiwi thought, yeah, ta, <laughs> which, I, bata, which I thought whatever. was, like, very overlooked was the, uh, whenever she, like, blows up the whale and, like, like drags him through town. Like that thing would have been at it's, least four hundred pounds. It's, it's got like a <laughs> just cute. Want to get it's that got out. like well, a cute magic, kind of overtone. Yeah, it's, it's got like this song playing over it, mm-hmm. and uh, but at the same time, like if you look in the back shots of like the whole montage, like there's people looking at her like what the fuck, like what is wrong right. with you? Like I thought like that was like incredibly dark because like she is not processing her grief. Oh, yeah. in any way, shape, or form, and that's when like you all keep talking about soy boy beta cuck or whatever. It's like he can't pass on if beta you cuck. keep hanging on to him and, like, won't let him go. And then at the end of the movie, that scene where, like, he plays the, uh, the like, Christmas message to her, mm. and she, like, has that cry at the end, I'm like, man. Like, she really, like, and at the end of the movie, like, it didn't even seem like she really had still gotten over him. And then the movie just ends, and I was like, sometimes, like, you really just, it takes a while to, like, get over oh, something yeah. like that. Yeah, and well, I thought yeah. this movie played that out very well. I yeah. think this movie definitely nailed that. Like, mm-hmm. that was great. I think it would have been greater were there not the magical element of it. I agree with that. That's the thing that I I wish it was her imagination. I really wish it was her imagination. I like the idea of it being ambiguous and the entire time you're unsure Mm -hmm. if this is just because that makes it like that would make it so much more heartbreaking Mm -hmm. than it being magic. Like he actually was there. Yeah, Yeah. knowing that he actually Mm -hmm. existed and was magical takes so much air out of this. But at the same time, like, like to me though, kind of like my point earlier, like that's the anime factor. Like I don't. It would have still been an anime if it was just you know his like spiritual being instead of his physically being there in a water form but like at the same time that's why she was dancing around with that 700 pound water beluga right. like like that's him physically being there gave it that. knowing that he exists it just makes it like it makes it funny to me and that's my problem yeah. like this it's movie, not a funny movie it shouldn't right? be a funny yeah. movie but like 
the entire time I just keep thinking knowing that he existed. It's just like, I can't shred heaven's waves until you let me go, bro. Like, I hear stupid shit like that. And I just Was that the fly. English version? Did he sound like that? Because I kind of feel that. Did he not sound now. like that in Japanese? No. no. Oh, man. No, he was a California Was he Johnny boy. Bravo? He wasn't that bad. <laughs> okay, like, good. I exaggerate, but he put it. it was, so it was actually, like, Californian. Just stuff. his. Like, oh, yeah. Boy. That is wow. tough. That's a tough. different. That's a, that's a whole different vibe. Goodbye. That's why I say, like, please watch this sub. <laughs> nah, definitely yeah. watch it dubbed. I just want to see a clip from the English version now. <laughs> He has a really calm voice for like most everything else, but like whenever he got energetic, it sounded like you know, hey, not that bad. It wasn't raspy or anything. I'm, I'm butchering it. He but. was the Kool Aid Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, all I right, mean, let's. Could have been a Kool Aid man being that big blue. That's true. You could, he's just if he was red water. Here I he am. Been. All right, let's. <laughs> she let's... could put Kool Aid in there instead of water. <laughs> let's. Do you think that they could have? Like, what kind of other? You know what? No, I don't Anything. want it. All right, so let's break Why into. Why don't you make him out of gelatin? Oh boy. <laughs> Actually, that you know, make... drag him around town then. All right. Oh, she had no trouble with it anyways. Uh, fat, let's... thin, or probably Also, wait, yeah. Yeah. speaking yeah. of the whale, that part where like she gets knocked down by that guy. And like he pulls her up and is like, "Hey, I'm sorry, I ran into you and uh -huh. stuff." And she like she's pulling around that whale. And he's like almost hitting on her when she's dragging around that oh. big blow up whale. Yeah, yeah. What if the whale just strangled him? Like, <laughs> or just gave him one right <laughs> deck, right. just like, right across. How his cute mouth. would that be? That'd What's, be like boop. <laughs> so that was like a brief moment where uh, Moni, it, Monico, Mon Monica, Inic uh, there's Min Monica, there's Monica, Monica, Monica. Monica. Yeah. like where he sees like, oh, she could move on. This is an opportunity, right. and she just doesn't take it because yeah. she's got him still hanging around. He was, uh, he was totally fine. And then after, after, no, after that, he was very like upset. That's when like, yeah, he had that on that jealousy beach streak, and, and, and like he was like mm. like really upset. It's like I won't be able to hold your hand. I won't be able to do any of that. That's like, right. yeah, that's this, when he was like, this upset. movie pr promotes cut culture. I don't know how to feel about that. But anyway, welcome to Fat Thin, Perfectly Fit. Man, you all didn't look at this movie seriously at all. <laughs> I mean, I was it meant how, to? I don't know how we could have, Bryce. So. And, yeah, it definitely was a comedy, judging by the last, like, ten minutes of it. Sorry, yeah, I my, was... My ribs were splitting during this movie. I mean, she drops her phone like a clumsy... She just clumsies her way through this movie. So in this segment, we tell you if this movie is fat, thin, or perfectly fit. Go watch the other ones. I don't want to do it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Price is ruining my mood. Uh, Nathan, you want to go first? Uh, sure. I will say this movie is a little fat, um... Mostly just because, as I've been saying, were there not magical elements to this where it left ambiguous, this movie would nail the sadder tone that I think it would have been much better off keeping to. Because I was disinterested and really kind of bored up until the point that the boyfriend dies. Yeah. And at that point, I'm actually like, I actually was a lot more into this film and enjoyed it more but i think it would have paid off a lot better had it not been magical waterfall destroying cities and all I mean, that weathering with you did it and they got away with it yeah the casualty count was like <laughs> zero two yeah i mean that much water that's gonna cause a lot of other damage oh, yeah. <laughs> like I don't. I don't care if the people that were in the building survived that. Everybody Everyone else, else on the streets below, <laughs> yeah. they don't make it. Do you know how heavy that would be falling from that high up? Are Do you, you know kidding? how heavy that beluga whale was that she was dragging around? the Four hundred pounds is what Mason quoted earlier. Earlier, uh, Dylan. Uh, yeah, this movie. Honestly, though, if I if I really think about it, this movie is pretty fit. Other than the the whole the whole firework tower thing. I, if you take that part out and you leave it to be ambiguous, if she's actually like seeing him and he's not real or something like that, this movie jumps like a point and a half up for me, I think. Um, otherwise, yeah, the teen drama parts, whatever. I like teen drama, so that was yeah. fine. Uh, that was, those parts kicked in. It didn't feel like it was a fat movie in any other places for me. I'm trying to think. Nah, the only thing that really sticks out that's like the most jarring thing that's problematic for me is just... Space Water Mountain coming to a theater near you. That was like a universal it. ride. Yeah, I mean it was like the uh, what is it? Hell Terror, uh, Hell Tower. What is that called? Ta tower, tower of Oh, the one that tower. you were talking What's about. What's the Disney Tower of Terror? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meets like the Water World Plunge or something. <laughs> yeah, um, Mason, go ahead. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say fairly fat, but like the I would say both of those two things were a little bit iffy for me. the The main issue that I had with this movie were all the, the flashbacks. 
like like early on, you know, the first like that. 26 minutes were just them, you know, kind of getting along and the montage was pretty cute, you know, it was kind of cheesy, but like it, it worked out pretty well and you know, they he introduced her to coffee on the beach and then he introduced her to that place and he was like I want to own a company like this one day. I want to do this and then this. And like as soon as he died for the next like maybe 9 minutes she was having flashbacks as if you hadn't just seen them. So like They're like, like split second flashbacks. Yeah, but they were just like four and there was a bunch of them too. Like like their friend her friend I know friends, this, you're thinking of the one where she's in there and they like she hands him the coffee. And then, like, she has that quick little flashback to where, like, he's grinding the coffee. But it's... I almost wouldn't call it a flashback, though, because it's like... No, it was a ton. It's like a sp- second. It's literally like a second. Yeah, it's, it's a highlight reel. But anyways, like, like over and over, her friends brought her coffee and then some kind of food. She had a flashback there. Then um, uh, the guy's sister is now working at that other place. And as soon as she walks in the door, then you have that other flashback. And it's like, yeah, I know. Like, I've seen all this. Like, like I understand that she's under, like, that she's dealing with grief and that, you know, these are memories. But she could just, they could just pan on her face just being, like, like, solemn. like sad. Yeah, solemn, mm-hmm. you know, mellow tone. And I don't know. I, 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 I'm not going to agree Not going to agree with that? I, you don't think I the do flashbacks think the, weren't? Like, even though, yeah, it wasn't that long since you had actually watched them the first time, if you're trying to nail home the fact that, like, she's in the same place, going through similar motions, but now just without this person that meant a lot to her. Yeah. I think that's a good way to do it. And I don't know if just seeing a look on her face is going to tell you specifically yeah. that's why she has that expression. I wonder, too, like, even if that's not the point, then maybe what I would do is just restructure maybe, like, whenever he dies. Like, give us a little bit more of that, like, cheesy... You know, they're getting along really well. Their, you know, their relationship is forming. And then maybe make that death halfway instead of, like, you know, a third of the way. And then give me less of that stuff afterwards. Maybe not, you know, less of the the panning moments where she's just obviously sad and her friends are trying to get her out and all this stuff. Like, I I do like that. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it just seemed, this movie seemed off balance for me. Like, I wanted it to be an anime and I wanted it to be kind of nice. And then it turned, which is fine. Um, but it didn't nail that second part for me because of some of the, it wasn't enough happy at the beginning for it to be sad at the end. That's, that's kind of what I get. I don't know. But price. I don't know either. (laughs) Uh, I, it's perfectly fit in my opinion. Everything like the reason, like, like I like how it's structured, like how you only have the relationship for that first third is so the other, like the themes in the movie can be explored uh, being getting like accepting grief and like that process and figuring out your own path and uh, Minato was just a like way to get to those themes because like she couldn't uh, like ride her own wave because she was relying on him for everything and then like figuring out how to cope with grief was because of his death so like that last like the main like two thirds of the movie needs to be there to explore those themes uh Again, I think this movie is perfectly fit. I liked all the scenes that were in it, except, and I knew this going in. When I watched the movie, I was rolling my eyes during the climax because I did not like it at all. Um, I just wish they would like allocate that time elsewhere, uh, maybe for a different kind of climax, but a much more muted one in which maybe like she finally like lets him move on, even though she still hasn't accepted the fact that like he's dead, but at least. She's considerate enough to let him pass on and mm-hmm. to leave it ambiguous as to whether or not he's real or not. So it's perfectly fit, in my opinion. Neat. So talking about the beginning of this movie is just one more thing that mm-hmm. I thought this is an interesting movie about. She starts off having just moved into a new apartment, hasn't even gotten all of her stuff unpacked, and she's almost immediately jumped into a relationship and then whenever that relationship ends tragically, she is she left moves. very much alone and with mm-hmm. almost nothing. So it's like, uh, basically it's a PSA of don't jump into a relationship until you have established friends in a new city. <laughs> in a new city. To. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in fact, just figure yourself out. Ride your wave. They were yeah. together for like a year, though. So. Yeah, I yeah. feel like there was definitely months that went by. I just don't know how long. Yeah, but yeah. she, like Nathan well, said, so she it, it is close to a year the... because it does go... To, to like season. the the Christmas season, the winter, where yeah. they're like putting the like little mm-hmm. locks on the thing, and they got taking that, the photos, that yummy fucking and, egg that you want to eat. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, what's uh, 
that message that that guy plays mm-hmm. over the intercom every Christmas, like mm-hmm. to his wife or whatever, that happens twice. So it is. Does it really? It, it is at least yeah. the full course mm-hmm. of a year. Oh, it's more than that then, because they wouldn't have done that like right away, surely. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it, it's it's at least two oh, years. All right, mm-hmm. good for them, I guess. I I didn't realize it was that long. I just thought it was like six to ten months or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, it did basically end on Christmas. That was another thing, too. Like, if you want to talk about Dark, he legit died on Christmas Day. Or the day after Christmas. I don't know Yeah, it was because it, it was cold. It was very well, Was it December Christmas. or January? Because I think at one point she's, she mentions that she was like, oh, the best way is kind of crescent. Like, they had, Christ- it, they had it, Christmas it, together. It comes yeah, they after had Christmas. Christmas but... snow. A- after snow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, after snow, that's right, yeah. So I guess it could have just been like the day after Christmas or something. Maybe. You know what would have mm-hmm. been cool? It starts snowing. And she just sees him in there because, you know, water frozen on that. And then you get them doing the sweet, like, <laughs> oh, out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. It's but, like, like two years later. Dead. Yeah, without even they need to be dead. Like, he's, like, I don't know if they showed, like, snow. And then you see little, like, tiny hems and all She's like, what's going on? Why can I see him right Or here? even <laughs> just, like, a mystical, like, she makes a snowman. And then it just becomes the snowman movie with Tim Allen. Jack like, Frost. Jack Frost. Snow- yeah, oh, it just yeah. turns into Jack Frost from that point forward. <laughs> oh, man. Good, you want to talk about a sad movie there was a sad point in that one you too. want to talk about a movie that holds its tone but anyway we're not going to do jack frost review on Tim this allen was in that anyway <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado let's get into the score of this wave uh nathan you're, you're gonna be first again so here you go. all right Deal with that's it. <laughs> uh it's the wave it goes this way that's fine so we're it this movie yeah, we'll start um, on. okay we need to like this way. <laughs> The beginning of it didn't hold my attention well enough. The ending really was disappointing. But through the middle, I think it did tell a good and meaningful story about loss and how hard it can be to deal with something like that because, like, it's very relatable. Like, you can understand just how tragic that situation is for our main character in this story. Um, But overall... uh, I'm going to end up landing at, like, a six and a half on it because it didn't hold my attention well enough and it had more flaws than what i'd hoped for out of this movie once mm. the boyfriend died mm. 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 so the themes are good the execution's a little bit rough the characters are, it's a teen drama at its core and i generally thought that that was fine uh, i i don't like the beginning where they bait us to think that beta cuck is gonna get with uh, Himiko and then, I'm still gonna research that. Nah, because listen, even it's with not he, him, it's definitely him. And even if it's, it's not, even for whatever reason, if they it's have not, that cute scene where she he gives her the towel. Right. Even that if it's not, happen. then they give him that follow up scene right afterwards to just keep saying, "Hey, this is going to be the guy." The beginning of the thing, he sees like, "Oh, this is the place. I know exactly where it's at. I just told her about it." Again, it's from his perspective. And then they go to rescue her. He's running up the stairs. They don't even show Mm-mm. Minato. And then all of a sudden, here comes the big dick Alpha yeah. Chad, right in his way, all the way on up. Swoop, grab your girl, peace, motherfucker. Like, Guess who's getting it? Dylan like, is right about yeah, that. Yeah, I swear to you, he is about that. that yeah, they bait, they so, bait and switch us in the most annoying way at the beginning, and I hated that. They part. don't make Wasabi any more redeemable. I mean, like he's like a clumsy, like klutzy. I don't think he ever got better as a firefighter. But no, like, I think he's. No, he's, there was a brief scene where I think oh, he yeah, actually did make it across well. the. Yeah. the the, the tightrope. Yeah. So they were on that scene for a while where yeah. he's like trying Drug to get on up. For so long. Like, why are you like? It's cool that they animated it. Like, it looks really because we that. animated it. That's why. And he would get up and then he'd fall back down. Yeah. Get up, and then in the background is just the same people are like, ah, oh, please get yeah. up. And, uh, <laughs> lazy animation. They're like, hey, we're here. In one animation. We just gotta do this. So yeah, that that part's so annoying. Uh, whatever. Minato seems to be like a pretty good dude once you get to know him. And, like that's fine. But like you just kind of like pissed at him because you're like this bro has no sense of a bro code he just swooped on in and just makes great eggs and shit and i didn't get to eat those eggs that sucks too uh that hurts the score bit those are weird eggs uh but overall i mean again my biggest thing against this movie is that I, I really wanted them to hit that tone i really wanted it to be ambiguous with that and take that plot point aside i wanted to just feel like the like there was heavy grief moments and it only really felt it on that very last scene uh, up until then, they give you little moments and hints, but the tone never lines up with what they're showing, and that disconnect was hard for me to attach to that part. I just wanted to stay too uplifting and upbeat for what they were trying to put out there up until the end for me. So, with that in mind, I land at a 7, um, which is still pretty good for it, all things considered. It wasn't a bad movie. It, I, I think it's just there's a disconnect for me, and that is just going to stop it from ever going higher than a 7. 
but it was fine. I mean, it's not like a bad movie, um, but there are some parts that are definitely clunky, and that stops it from being anything better than a seven in my book. Uh, so at the beginning of these movies, like, I always try to have like a list of like good and bad, and throughout the movie, I'll add some stuff here and some stuff there. This movie started out pretty darn good. I actually really liked all those cheesy things that I was talking about. Um, it's a teen drama, all right? Like, kind of comes with the territory. But as this movie proceeded, like, after the guy died, like, it was still okay. It was kind of weird. Sorry, I'll just scoot up. There you go. <laughs> uh, after the guy died, like, it was still okay. Uh, it just kept moving on and kept moving on. The grieving was a little weird. It was a little sporadic. And then, like, then he started coming back. And then he kept coming back. And then the song kept playing. And there was very little for me to like after about halfway through this this movie. And, I, like, I don't know what it is. I said earlier that this is an anime through and through. This is what I think of when I think of other people liking animes. I don't know. I think, to Dylan's point, this movie did have different tones. But the problem is, I don't think that they landed on what they were trying to do, in my opinion. Uh, on what they were, you know, throughout the whole thing. But this movie's a five. I, like... I didn't find it redeemable at all. And to be honest, too, like, it's just, it's not a movie I'll ever watch ever again. And uh, I don't know. It's it's just tough. Okay, viewers, uh, let's go over this for just a brief moment before I do my score. Mm. So, a five in Mason's book is like when I gave uh, Brink or Brick or whatever. Brink. Like, like don't you Brink dare. is a different movie. Don't you say shit you about stay Brink. stay off of I Brink's look, lock. <laughs> Brink is great. But, like, given that low of a score, and Mason, I mean, more power to him. I mean, it's, it's, it's a failing it's his right. thing, And he hated this movie upon mm-hmm. watching it anyway. So, I definitely feel him. I just, I like that I am the one who has the title of, um, like, lowest rated movie besides the ones that I've given. So, I will hold that title and cherish it. <laughs> well, you, you give them a lot more often, too. Yes, yeah, that, so. that is true. Yeah. You hand them out willy-nilly. Yeah, you, you oh, yeah. very much. I mean, like hotcakes. It's honestly the norm, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. We we expect it now. When you give a high score, it's honestly strange. We it's don't. very strange. <laughs> we think you're lying to us. Are you gaslighting us, Price? <laughs> Uh, I gotta assure Surprise. you. I gotta assure you that this movie is not gonna be given one of those low scores. Again, you'll be like, well, "I picked the movie." No, I mean, I just I always screen my movies and make sure that I like them before. Thanks, Kenley. I think is one of the, the the least ones I've given. And yeah, that was fair. Watching it, that movie alone. Anyway, this movie. I love talking about Thanks Killing. Mm-hmm. It was oh, the I best love talking about conversation. I've this ever movie's had. not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> that was all coming from your side. Which of the one table. do you rewatch again? Thanks Killing or Ride Ooh, Your Thanks Killing or Ride Your Wave, Mason? Probably Ride Your Wave. Wow. Anyway. But it's only because yeah. I like the one song that they played throughout the entire fucking movie. Kiwi da. Shady ba doo all they did. Whatever it is in English. Okay. So finally, my score. You listen to it. I know. I will forget. I don't. One of the things like I like most about movies is if they're trying to tell like a slightly intellectual story uh, and they actually respect your intelligence as an audience member, I love that. And I thought that this movie did that in spades. Um, better than uh, The Night is Short, I think it uh, like it subtly tells these uh, themes, uh, which anime is definitely not known for, for being subtle. And this movie does it very well, I think. I mean, the animation itself is okay. Uh, the water looks really pretty, and I think the art direction, like, I think the characters look really unique and good. Um, and the song, like, I really like the song, and I think that, like, they made this song, like, thankfully they used, they made this song just for this movie. If it was, like, a song, like, a like a, just a regular pop song. Like that Paper maybe was Planes? Like, like, Paper Planes. Like, if it's from... All I want to do. <laughs> if it's a song from the public lexicon, and they throw it in a movie, and, like, they use it repeatedly, like... I don't like how those two things mix together at all. But they made this movie. So when you think of Ride Your Wave, you think about this song. And this song is not used elsewhere. Like, it's just for this movie. So when you hear the song, you think about the movie, which I like the dynamic between that. How often are you guys going to listen to the song? Kind of wet a yacht. Well, I, I have it on Spotify. I, I still enjoy sure the song. Do, yeah. And the scenes, like, I think that where, like, in teen dramas... The relationships never feel authentic to me, and this one really felt authentic to me. Besides the forced nature, I didn't think about it like Dylan just put it, Mm -hmm. where, like, Big Dick Mahoney is coming up to steal your girl. Uh 
that's kind of accurate because like she immediately swims for him. There's this shot where like he the fireworks, the, the yeah, fireworks are fireworks popping behind yeah, him. Behind like, him it is the least subtle scene. Anyone's oh, gonna yeah. swoon for that. Yeah. Like, Who is you it? <laughs> just drop the fucking trowel, dude. And then the other guy's like, oh, oh, he's trying, still getting dressed. He's, he's worked so hard for this, and all the other soy boy beta cucks watching this film are like, he'll never make it. <laughs> But then the rest of the two thirds, like I believe, like I think it hits the like the emotional beats that it's going for. Like it never rises above like, like it does not get too joyful in this movie at all. Besides them being together afterwards, there are no like joyful moments in it. And when like you think that joyful moment is going on, just like I talked about earlier, that montage of her pulling around the beluga whale, there's that deep melancholic tone behind it because like people are looking at her like she's a crazy person because she is a crazy person. <laughs> But but, you, but later you find out she's not a crazy person because he was real the whole time. And that was so dumb. The whole climax is so, again, asinine and contrived and any other kind of derogatory term I can throw at it because it was not needed. Um, again, as, as I said earlier, I like the the duality of bringing back the same people that brought them together and bringing them apart. But all I want to do just... Fireworks. It was, it was it, the one time it would have played. It's <laughs> just, like, that part was really bad, but the ending stuck the landing so hard after that. Like, it leaves you with, like, for days afterward, like, I was thinking about this movie. I was like, man, that movie, like, really hit hard. And, like, I was thinking about this movie for a while. And before my rewatch, like, I legit was going to give this movie a 10 with, like, not being difficult... Like, this movie just really stuck with me, and I really liked it. But, man, watching it on that rewatch, like, I I skipped through the last, like, the ten minutes of that climax because I disliked it so much. Like, it ruins, like, the fact that, like, you think that he is just a mental thing in her mind, like, of her trying to process grief, but you find out he's real. Like, it just throws all that to the side. Like, you dummy, you thought that you had that figured out? Uh-uh, we're figuring it out he's for you. He's magical. It had, yeah. like, a P.S. I love like you that. type vibe, where, like, he was still around, but he wasn't around, but he mm. was around. I don't know. I, I haven't seen that movie, so I, I don't know. Don't watch it. So, uh, for that reason, that climax is gonna knock it down pretty hard. So, I'm... I was hovering at a nine, but I'm probably gonna go to eight and a half for it, because... Man, that climax really ruins a lot of the movie for me. But still, the rest of the emotional beats, the characters, the writing, I still carries the movie to an eight and a half for me. Yep. So, uh, Mason, that leaves you with your movie pick, but you, uh, you didn't know what you wanted before the Yeah, movie. I guess I guess I'll land on the a French horror again. Um, oh, it's called Record. Oh boy. R E C. It's Quarantine was the American version that they made a couple. Had the years girl from afterwards. Dexter in it. Don't remember her name. Deb. Oh, Who, quarantine. Deb? Deb? Well, Deb. Yeah, yeah, quarantine had her. Yeah, quarantine. Mm. When she was actually relevant. I don't the know weird thing about it. this movie is like, if we were to do like a, a double feature again, I would almost want to watch both because they that are. That would be really cool. Eerily similar. They are like. Well, they're almost shot for shot. They are right? shot for shot. So most so they were do. both filmed independently of one another. No. Yeah. So Rec was what? filmed, I think, in two thousand six. No, Rec, Rec was done first, and then they yeah. did the quarantine the one. Quarantine was like maybe oh eight or oh seven. Yeah. And it. Like literally the same plot, the same everything. So. It's even like shot in, like pretty much the same like setting place too, as far as oh like, it is. Uh, it's an apartment complex, like the same exact apartment complex yeah. though. Like not even just Anyways, an American apartment. Friend, uh, French movie. Uh, we'll just I don't know. It, it's it is really good. I enjoy it. So. By the way, we were gonna film Roger Wave in the water. That was one of the main reasons I picked that movie. That's but true. somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna name names here on the podcast. Uh, didn't watch the movie, the so we couldn't do it in the water. The movie that you wanted to give a ten. Huh? Yeah. The main reason you picked a no, movie I could have waited. I could have waited. How to would talk you have taken that. that button out on the water, Price? Yeah, it's <laughs> true, Price. I would have thrown it at the camera. Use your head, <laughs> buddy. Oh, that that would have just hurt the camera anyway, guys. That's our show. That's You're okay. gonna hear us argue for the next couple minutes. No. So even if you brought it out onto the water, nobody's <laughs> riding any waves. We're floating barely, and none of that. When, when, it's a, it's a, when the no boats came by, we were kind of yeah, we were kind of bobbing. Bobbing. Nathan's uh, getting up and telling us it's time to get off. So bye. Check me out at Rudy Wink. Yeah, plugs. Plugs for days. I think that's all I got. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> I always wonder how long he keeps it recording. After. I think he's still recording. I gave up about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> okay, so, so it is done. So I can delete that note no. now.